Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to talk about designing for the human body. A few things with the human body are, it's one, highly complex and difficult to make look right, as attested by my drawing skills, and two, it's the biggest thing to be able to design for nowadays if you want to go anywhere with design. If you are a person designing in general for other people to purchase, you have to at some point think about the human body for what you're doing. Um, some things can be kind of forgotten with uh, biomechanics of a chair or a sitting stool, um, how someone interacts with a knife um, for cutting stuff. Um, say though you want to start designing clothing, say you want to start designing protective gear, say you want to start designing potential prostheses or backs, um, back supports, leg supports, you want to have a good human body to work with. And in Fusion, the big trouble is getting large poly meshes taken from, say, Remake with multiple pictures or finding something online that works with Fusion um, in order for you to model and have this accurate human body to work with. Well, I figured out a great solution today, and I'm going to show you the way that I usually go about including human body in my design. First, I went online, and there's a software called Make Human. Uh, a friend of mine recommended that I try it out, and if you go to makehuman.org, it's downloadable for PC, Mac, and Linux. It uses common biomechanic, um, sorry, common biometrics for the human body in multiple different cultures. It also takes into account a lot of different features and how the skeleton can align and how the changes that can go on within that. And not only that, you can add clothing in case you need just a human body to import into your model for someone's hand there to be sort of a model someone showcasing they're using your product. So I've downloaded Make Human. I've got this human body involved here, and I'm gonna to go to the macro settings. This is usually the standard you start out with. This is where you go to start making your human body. Um, a few things you get to change are one, the gender. So this is gonna be a highly feminine body that we're making here. Um, it's gonna be average age, middle age, we'll say. Um, this is actually probably 35 years old, not quite middle age. Muscle tonality, we'll make her a little bit um, bulkier. Um, we'll make her a little bit not so skinny though, so she's not gonna be very well muscularly developed, but she's also not gonna be too, she's not gonna be considered um, fat or overweight. Um, height wise, she's going to be kind of short. Um, proportionality, she's going to have, yeah, that looks good. And we're going to make her, no, pretty Caucasian. Mm, we'll do sort of half and half. Um, yes, okay. African American female. Um, not only that, she has a few issues with her body. Um, First off, her torso is misaligned, so I'm going to have that over there. Um, she's going to have very specifically a longer torso than expected. Um, and if we look at the side of her, she's going to have a little bit of a lordosis. So she's got this really complex spine and body structure that we have to take into account for this next model. I'm going to make a back brace for this person. Well, so before I can make the back brace, I have to have the mesh infusion. Um, this one right here is just one that I generally had, but I want to make this one my mesh. So first off, I want to be sure in my settings that I have Imperial set up, um, or depends on where you are, if you are um, over in Europe, or anywhere else in the world actually, um, like Canada, you can set up the metric and be sure you have the right units for your renders. So when I export, I want to go over and make sure it's a stereolithography and STL file. I want to be sure, I guess feet on the ground works for me, doesn't, it's not necessary, that depends on the initial ori orientation where the um, origin is located. I hit binary instead of ASCII. Um, ASCII would be eh, okay, but the thing is, is that the mesh sometimes doesn't fully render, doesn't get fully imported, so you have these big gaping holes, kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the first Terminator near the end of it. I set it to inches so that she's a certain number of inches tall, and she's got a height to her that is going to be accurately put into Fusion. So I've got all this fine. I set the name to Test Human 2 hit export. Now, it didn't show me a place to go and save it initially because it saves it to its own specific folder initially created. To find that, you go over into your, for me it's finder, you just go to your documents file and there should be one called make human. Um, there's a version inside here, you see all these files here, but the one that's important is exports. And you go in, here's test human 2, which is the file that I just created. Well, I'm in Fusion, I want to start designing something, and I'm making a back brace for her. So I go over to New Design, and I'm going to go into Insert, and I'm going to insert a new mesh. And right here we have ourselves Test Human 2. I hit Open, voila, my human. Um, I didn't put feet on the ground, so she's oriented with the center of mass on the origin. Uh, I'm going to actually turn her upwards, 
like this, and actually I'm gonna hit move to ground. So now her feet are on the ground here. Um, okay, so I've got my model, my mesh put into fusion. Um, and so now I wanna go about creating the back brace. Well, the great thing is, is that if I go into the sculpt tool, the creating a form tool, I've got a few options. One, I can create a plane. Well, first off, the plane is probably the initial starting point that I want to have. Um, other parts, if I were to create, um, if I were to create a cylinder, I could put it over the arm, and then using the pull tool, which is a drop down over here, or I have it up in the bar right now, um, I can then create it to align to that arm. But for a back brace, I'm going to create a plane. Um, the plane. Oh, sorry. Before we create the plane, we need to figure out where our body is located. So I'm going to go over, and I'm going to an offset plane, open the origin, select an offset plane from here, I'm going to have this align generally with, um, in this case I want to see the back line here, so it doesn't really matter, but I kind of want to have it so it'll stay a little bit outside of the back, but on the back as well, hit OK, I've got the plane there, now I go over, hit plane, select the plane that I want to work with, sorry for that graphical glitch, um, and now I can either utilize the center point so that along the um, origin axis, I can go and select where I want it to be. So center point is gonna go both directions. So I'm gonna say, this is my center point here. I'm gonna move up and over. Voila, no, no, no. Let's actually create a two point plane. Let's showcase our plane. Create our plane. Select this axis. Two points. I'm going to select a customized point there and drag it down all the way over to about here. And I can make that exactly, let's say, negative seven and a half inches wide. Um, the number of faces laterally, the width. Okay, we'll make that. Okay, that looks good for me. That's actually going to work. So I've created my plane. I can hide my origin, hide the construction planes that I made. And now I've got this little plate on uh, the back of my object, um, at the back of my person, actually. And I have two bodies here. One, this is the form that we made. And next is the actual body. I'm actually just going to rename this um, body. And then this is going to be actual brace. There. That way I know which one is which, the mesh bodies here. So I'm going to select my pull tool, or it's the drop down, and click pull. Um, I'm going to start selecting the points in order to create my form. And I'm going to get close up for this so you can see what's going on. Every vertice that I select, it's getting pulled to the mesh um, and aligned to the mesh. It's going to find the nearest point to connect, and it's just going to, it's going to just sit here right onto it. You'll see it interferes with the mesh a little bit, but the more points that you add to your surface, the more accurate the curve gets to the body that's working with. And of course, I can just click and select most of them at once. I can hide the body initially, go through and select the last few points here, reshow the body, it aligns, hit OK. And now I've got a very accurate slice or a uh, um, part just really close to the back of this person's body. And actually, because they had an asymmetric back, you'll see that there's a lot of asymmetry in the back of this person too. What you'll see is that it kind of has a little bit more lilt to this side, so it curves this way, and then it kind of pulls in here. Um, and this is great because if you want to design something for, if you want to design something for a person that is going to be, that's very specific, if you're designing this for a specific person, you've now modeled something that is specific to their body. So, things from here, I'm gonna say, well, obviously we want some rounded corners, so I'm gonna delete these to give it just a basic roundedness, something to work with product-wise. Um, I'm just gonna hit Finish Form. I'm gonna use the Thicken tool, select my object. We'll make it a quarter inch thick, because that's what I used last time. I can go over to my modifications, hit Fill It. It's gonna select this long edge. We're gonna make that 0.1 inches. Yes, good. Nice, and that's the basic back brace. And if I wanted to add anything else, I could say create a plane across here, have it intersect with that line there, and move it outwards, um, or I can go back to the initial 
um, scoped environment there. Um, and then say, okay, what we're actually going to do is select these two, this edge right here, go to this modify here, hit Alt, move it outwards. So now I'm creating parts on this side that I want to work with. Look from the top, select them, select them both here and here and here. Uh, okay, I'm an idiot. I didn't hit Alt. I was hitting Alt. I hit Alt. I create this little curly here. Hit OK. I want to reinsert my body right there. See what's going to happen here. Hit the pull tool. Select this vertice, this vertice, this vertice, this vertice here. So it matches up. This vertice, this vertice, this vertice, this vertice. So it's pretty close. Hit OK. Hide the body. So now it's a little bit more closely and accurate there. Um, if I'm not satisfied with that part there, I can select this edge, this edge, go back to that, move these backwards slightly, push them outwards, hit OK, see how they align on the body. So what we've now got is our back brace. Go through, create some holes here, apply a strap, and we've now created this attached to this human body. That's actually very quick for what I wanted to do. It was just a very simple object. Obviously there's a lot of work to be done with this, but you can see the power of having a mesh model that's creatable on the fly. No external work with Remake, no external work with a um, modeling service, no extra modeling on your part. You just insert this body from uh, Make Human into Fusion, start using the pull tool, and now you've got very specific geometry that you have for the person that you're designing for. So take this into consideration next time you want to use a human body. All right guys, this has been David. Try out Fusion 360, slap in some make human models, see what you can do. Have a great day.